Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So, as many of us thought after the release of 1.14.0, the last CMU version release, we thought that they were going to take it easy with the development of this emulator for a month or two at least and give us some quality of life improvements. And while yes, we are going to be getting tons of quality of life changes, we were completely wrong with the fact that they are going to be doing any slowing down in the development of this emulator. In this video, I am going to be telling you absolutely everything we know so far about this next mainline CMU release. As I said, it is going to be titled 1.15.0, meaning that it is going to be a major version upgrade. For anybody who's not aware of how the CMU development team handle their naming structure of the different emulator versions, basically you can summarize it like this. If you got, for example, like our previous release, version 1.14.0, and the next CMU release was 1.14.1, this would basically mean that all they were going to be adding was small upgrades and fixes for stuff that may have been broken in previous versions and maybe small quality of life updates. However, when they do exactly what they are going to be doing with this next release and give us a complete new number change, in this circumstance moving from 1.14.0 to 1.15.0 directly, it means that they are giving us a major, major update to the emulator. Before we get started, at this point in time we still don't have a release date or release day for this new emulator version, however we have been told that it is meant to release in the next 2-3 to three days, so once it does get released I'll be sure to let all of you guys know either here on YouTube or over on my Twitter so keep an eye on the channel. The first piece of information we have been given is probably one of the best features that none of us even realized that we needed in this emulator. We are going to be getting full mod support via graphics pack utilization. To give you all of the information that I possibly can, I'm going to quote the developers themselves so that I do not make any mistakes in how I explain this. So here's what we've been told. To make mod management a lot easier, we have added the ability to overwrite game data files via graphics packs. This means no more need to manually mess with game files when installing a mod, you just put the whole mod as a graphics pack into the graphics pack folder of CMU and enable it just like you would with a graphics pack. With the addition of this feature, the question arises if Graphics Pack is still a fitting name for this feature since not every modification is going to be graphics related. For now, we have decided to stick with this term but we will consider alternative naming structures in the future. Now, if it hasn't quite sunk in just yet how massive this feature is going to be for this emulator, I will link down in the description of this video a massive repository of mods for many, many games, not only for Breath of the Wild, the most popular game by far on this emulator, but so many other mods that are also available not only for CMU emulator, but also the Wii U itself that will also fully work on CMU. If you're not aware of it, there are massive Breath of the Wild conversion projects already in development. Some of them you may already be aware of as I have covered them on the channel. For example, the Linkle conversion mod which completely removes Link's character model from the game and replaces it with Linkles from Hyrule Warriors. And also the Zelda complete conversion mod which basically changes Link's character mod to Zelda's character mod and replaces practically every single piece piece of armor with a completely different one. Other mods that are massively popular on CMU are the ones that completely changed the UI for the Wii U gamepad and replace it with whichever controller's user interface you are using, for example the Xbox 360, Xbox One or a DualShock 4 UI mod. It's going to remain to be seen exactly how this new system is going to work but by the sounds of it and how it has been described, it is going to be an absolutely amazing addition to this emulator. The next piece of information is probably equally as exciting as this one. They are going to be adding the initial implementation of eShop usability within CMU emulator itself. Once again, I'm going to quote the developers so I can give you as accurate a representation of exactly what's going to be added. With recent progress on compatibility, the eShop app is now working. As with most online apps, it is going to require dumped online files from a real Wii U in order to connect to official Nintendo servers. 
Since the eShop app is just a browser with extended functionality, a lot of the eShop features are working out of the box on CMU without any need to explicitly add support for them on their side. At this point in time, we have been given a list of exactly what works and what doesn't work in regards to this eShop compatibility. Things confirmed to be fully working in this eShop implementation include browsing the eShop, adding funds to your account, purchasing games, and watching trailers and videos. CMU Hook itself is going to be required in order to watch any of these videos. Unfortunately, at this point in time, you are not going to be able to download any of your purchased games from this eShop within CMU Emulator itself. We've been told that downloading games and updates isn't technically done in the eShop, instead it's done in an entirely different part of the Wii U. However, we have also been told that they will talk more to us about this feature being added in the future. Just imagine that being built into CMU Emulator itself, having the ability to actually download your own owned and bought games from CMU itself would be an absolutely awesome feature and one I myself would absolutely love to see added in the future. So if those two features weren't enough, there is another huge feature that's going to be added in this next update. They are going to be adding a PowerPC debugger for use within the emulator itself. Now, I know a lot of you will not be familiar with exactly what these kind of debugging tools are going to give to us, so here's the too long didn't read version of what the developers of CMU have given to us. This debugger is mainly a feature aimed towards anyone interested in reverse engineering. It won't be relevant for most CMU users, but we do hope it will accelerate the development of game modifications and patches just like FPS++. The debugger itself has been in development for almost two years, but since they thought it was such a niche feature, it was constantly getting pushed back in favour of more important features and functions within the emulator. Now that they are happy that this debugging tool has finally reached a stage where all of the core functionality is fully working, they are going to be releasing it to us in this next CMU iteration. Now, I'm pretty sure that 99% of you guys are going to be aware of what FP PS++ is and does. For anybody who's not aware of what it does, it basically allows Breath of the Wild, a 30 frames per second game, to be fully played at a 60 frames per second frame gap. With the implementation of this new debugging tool, we are potentially going to be able to get similar FPS patches for many other games on this emulator. It also may help to improve the already existing frame rate unlocking graphics packs we already have, as I've previously said, FPS++ for Breath of the Wild, and potentially the other frame rate unlocker which gives us 60 frames per second gameplay speed in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. While yes, there are currently no in development 60 FPS patches for games like Twilight Princess or Wind Waker HD, I for one would be absolutely massively excited to see any kind of development of these kind of game patches. The final piece of information we have been given about CMU 1.15.0 is yet another massive piece of news and another massive improvement for the emulator. They are going to be adding a fully configurable overlay user interface for CMU emulator. This image is pretty much the only thing we have gotten from them at this point in time, but we have also been told that each of these displayed stats, for example frame rate, CPU utilization and RAM utilization are going to be fully toggable within the UI of CMU emulator itself. This is yet another feature that they had planned and has been in development for quite some time. They also plan to improve this much much more in future, especially so since as they tell us there are quite a few interesting performance statistics that CMU emulator itself is already tracking internally. I myself am massively excited about this addition of a user interface within CMU Emulator. For anybody who's not aware, I myself use MSI Afterburner in combination with RevaTuner Statistics Server and HW Info to give me all of my benchmark numbers that you would have seen in some of my CMU version comparison videos. Now, what you may not be aware of is the fact that the use of these tools actually adds slight variance and can actually adversely and negatively affect your performance in in CMU or any program in which you use them. 
Hopefully with the introduction of this new UI overlay, especially so if it is massively customizable, I will be able to give you the best possible representation of exactly what kind of performance increases you can expect from version to version. On top of all of these changes, we have been told that there are going to be a lot of quality of life improvements and lots of bug fixes for games that are currently not working in CMU 1.14.0 but were working in previous iterations of the emulator. As I already said at the start of the video guys, we do not have any ETA for the release of this new CMU version, but as soon as we have anything solid, I will make sure to let you know as soon as possible. Please do let me know down in the comments section below what your most hyped feature for this new emulator release is. I personally myself am most hyped for the new mod support as graphics packs, but as I said, do let me know down in the comments section below. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, as always remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.